So now we're gonna actually try and turn this light away from that building and we're gonna point it across the street. Hopefully we don't blind anybody that's driving. So we're gonna turn it around. You see that uh, in the alleyway? It's actually illuminating all the way there in the alleyway. Carl, can we turn it away, please? Put it back. Wow, big difference, guys. I'm in route to Burbank, California. I'm gonna be meeting up with legendary designer Carl Schultz. Carl has been in the industry for 40 years designing lights for the film industry and productions. And so he's gonna be showcasing me some of these big, huge lights that are meant to replace some of the, the older fixtures out there in the industry. We're quite excited as far as what we can do with these lights outside and see how far they go. And we're gonna, he's gonna be talking about the lights for a little bit and uh, some of the specs around it. The idea is pretty much bring out the lights in a parking lot, see how far they go and, and see how the strength of it is and get an inside look as far as how it was made and what's the features about. We just got here on location in Burbank and uh, we're gonna meet up with uh, Carl and then we're gonna check out these lights. So we're in the, the Draco building. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Draco, they're off uh, Lincoln, uh, close to the five freeway. And uh, actually I should put my mask on. Durr. It's one of those things you, you forget, you know? It's like, man, it's quite, uh, Quite annoying that we tend to forget our masks so let's give you a quick tour of the place real quick this is carl schultz everybody hello so this is the light before we get into that let's go real quick to draco so this is draco in burbank and if you guys ever need equipment oh, for is, uh, for film lighting yeah. camera movement they got everything here so this is a place to be if you guys are trying to get some gear. But today's uh, video, we're going to be uh, checking out the 800 watt Schultz LEDs, And we got the man Carl Schultz itself here. Hi. And what are you showing us, Carl? That's a wireless uh, demo board. Lumen radio for the 800 watt. So I can show you how easy and quick you can connect this to the lights. Little, little baby can do that. <laughs> wow, very much a, a very easy task to do, but this dimmer board looks fun to use. Uh, no, look you... at that, look at the light outside. Oh, look, we're gonna check out the actual output itself on the slide and how he can adjust it to the dimmer. And the wireless dimming system is IP65, so you can use it in the rain. Okay. So, you know what, let me get another light because from the, the back side, oh, actually, you know what, this will suffice with my light on the camera on board. So, oh, this, likes, it's good. It's nice. this is the LEDs, I'm sorry, Schultz LEDs 800 watt. Now, Carl, on, for people out there, what is this equivalent to as far as house power? Okay, we have made a test with the M1818, the Ari light, uh -huh. of, uh, M18, and with the same focus, like this, we have a 30 degrees focus uh, uh, beam angle. Ari by sight, the M18, with the same focus, and we brighter than Ari M18. So we have six amps. What is that equivalent to a house power uh, appliance or anything like that? For people that don't know. Six amps, 120 volt. Okay, okay. That's what they use. If in a 220, you have three amps. Okay. okay? So, um, the difference is with the HMI units, we can have the lights in the rain. This is the first rain-proofed DMX system. On, this is not rain-proofed. This is rain-proofed, the box here. Okay. And you can take this off easily with Velcro. Take it off from the, from the lights and do it 
give it manual, analog, and take this off if you don't need it. Gotcha. So as Carl was saying, these lights are hope to replace the big M18s. If you guys ever see film productions out there, they have these huge lights and majority of the times they are used for exterior lights. Uh, if you see them on a condor, if you see them like on a process trailer trucks, uh, they're using these big lights. So if you wanna make pretty pictures, they actually have to have big lights. The more you have on light, the more you can control cutting and shaping light itself. And if you put diffusion out here, if you start putting flags and all these things, at the end, you get beautiful soft light. And then that way you can control it. So the bigger the source, the prettier the picture. So that's what Carl was saying that this unit itself is high powered. And as you can see, the distance is over there in the other building and it's a widespread. You have no maintenance on those lights. So if you, they're going for 50, 60,000 hours, that's a whole human life. And so you have it for rent, for example, out and in, and, and that's it. You only clean it a little bit if they're dirty. And something, nothing. And you have the HMI, a lot of maintenance when they're coming back. You need two bulbs. Bulbs only 400 or 300 hour life and cost a lot of money. How much are the bulbs, Carl? Well, right. Now the new ones, I guess, about 400 bucks. Imagine yeah. that, you gotta replace the bulbs constantly on the older units. This itself has how many hours, you think? Normally 50, 60,000 hours. 50, 60,000 hours. In. These diodes can withstand many, many years of use without having a change of color temperature, uh, the intensity. Okay, we have 5,600 Kelvin. We have CI 96, 97. That's all what you have, 140,000 lumen, the whole unit. So that's what you have to need, a six amps, 120 volt. And that's it. Water resistant. We have shoot in the rain. That's absolutely the best cooling for LED lights. <laughs> 140,000 lumen. If you guys can imagine, if you go to a local store out there and you find a flashlight, they will say like 300 lumens, 600 lumens, 1500 lumens for like a flashlight. So imagine 140,000 lumen. So this is why the film industry prefers big, huge lights. It's because not only it provides high output uh, and these lights will also be robust, cost efficient and longevity. That is the beauty of these lights. And how, 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 how much is the weight on this one, Carl? 50 pounds. About 50 pounds. So I wouldn't break your back being the one person to actually load this thing on. Uh, I would actually have two people loading this in there. It's doable by one person, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'm feeling this right now. The quality is really good. It's and all casting. Oh, okay. So no casting. metal sheet, it's all casting. Casting. How long have you had it on, Carl? There's no heat at all. No, it's on light. for just an hour now. So it's been on for about an hour. I don't feel any heat. As you can see, I'm touching this oh, unit. Can, it's getting, it's getting. Yeah, there's no heat whatsoever. Okay, and I don't yeah, know if... You Oh, so I guess we could put our cheeks in there. <laughs> There's no heat whatsoever. I don't know if you guys come across LEDs. Uh, majority of them have fans inside to cool it off. And, and sometimes they do get hot. And if there is no cooling system, they're, they're very hot to touch. You know, one, one thing more, when you don't need a wireless DMX system, you take this off easily. And then you have analog dimming here on the unit. And you take this out. If you need wireless dimming system and it's raining, in two seconds, you click it on and put the cables together and that's it. Imagine that guys, wireless DMX system. So if you I want uh, all this power and control within your fingertips, hook up one of these DMX systems right here. That is the deal right here. If you don't want to be uh, going up there in a ladder or up in a condor, if you just want to have control completely in your hands, hook up one of these wireless dimmers and it's waterproof IP65. Yeah. One, one other thing is all the dongles. You have a dongle here, a transmitter, and a dongle on the light, the receiver. All those dongles need to get charged after 12, 15 hours. 
here you have this downstairs, you can charge it easy. If the light's hanging upstairs, everything is built in, don't need charge. They're taking the power from the AC. You have only this, the receiver is built in in the box. I give you an example, I show you now how we do this. Can you hold us? Sure. Okay, now you switch it off, take this off, take this out, take the AC out here, put the AC in here. Switch it on and you can dim here manual. It's right. not working now. So now you can actually just plug in directly and then you utilize Edison power and control it from here. So yes. you get the power switch right here, real easy, real smooth to push. And then you can dim it with this knob. Yeah. So, and you can plug in the source. So it's the same if you want to get the AC, uh, the dimming on. What you have to do, you open the box, you only select your numbers, select and switch. You have two lights, one light or five lights. You have one light, you put it on one. Everything, don't touch anything, close it. And then you connect the wires, put this on, put the link and box. Go. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my onboard and we're gonna walk back and you can see the strength to to of this light on my face. And the further you get, the more the light softens up, obviously. So here we are. It's quite a bit distance. The light is all the way back there. And we can even still go further back if we wanted to. That is the power of this light. And looking around, it's already illuminating almost half of this parking lot. So now we're gonna actually try and turn this light away from that building and we're gonna point it across the street. Hopefully we don't blind anybody that's driving. So we're gonna turn it around. You see that uh, in the alleyway? It's actually illuminating all the way there in the alleyway. Carl, can we turn it away please? Put it back. Wow, big difference guys. That is so cool. Across the street, Check it out, Carl, let's put it back there. You know what, I'm gonna flip the camera if I can. How do I flip this? No, my camera won't flip. But away, look at that. You got the street lights illuminating that. And Carl, if you put it back over there, let's have it on. All the way over there across the street. So we're in a parking lot right now. And we're gonna walk just close to the exit of the parking here and we're still in that distance of the light. I'm gonna keep walking, I'm gonna jaywalk here. Hopefully there is no cops, but we're gonna, we're gonna check out the distance of the light here. Stand by, I'm gonna cross the street. Hopefully there's no cops. There's no cops. Okay, jaywalk, 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 jaywalk. Okay, check this out. I'm over here already. And the light is going way further out. And I can see it illuminating all the way back here. And that is just from one single light source. See my shadow, it comes into play here. See my shadow over here? And there is no other lights within the area that will give me this shadow. So check this out. There's my shadow. And we're about half a block already. And I'm sure I can probably go another, maybe another 50 feet or so. But yeah, that is wild as far as the distance. And I, I can't tell you offhand how far that is, but down there is where the light source is. And we're walking towards that now. 
and look at the power of this light and the distance and the closer I get back to the light and the more it's gonna illuminate my face let's check it out actually you know what let me call Carl and let him know that to turn away that unit I don't have a walkie so Let's go back to that spot where I feel like it's giving me a shadow. Hey Carl, can you turn the light away? All right, here's a test. Whoa, <laughs> that is wild guys. That is how far this distance is. Okay, Carl, uh, let's turn the light back to me. Wow. You know, uh, to this distance, this is how much light is still on my face. Isn't that wild? Carl, can you turn it to your left just a little bit more? Maybe I can go down the alleyway a little bit more. But you know, it's being blocked by fences over there, so I can't really... Yeah, but this, this wall pretty much will tell you the distance of this light. It is quite far. Yeah, so I'm gonna be walking back. How, would you, how, how long do you think this distance is, Carl? Where I'm at? Yeah, what do you think? Quarter of a mile? Yeah, well, I wouldn't know, but you know, pace it on the, the seconds here. I'm gonna be walking back. Yeah, it's about more than 100 meters, so, you know, forgive us if we don't know the specifics on distance here, but uh, I just want to show you how far this light goes. And if you're looking at seconds from the moment I walked from that area back to the light, that's how far I had to go to see how, par uh, to see how far this uh, light will actually uh, illuminate. So hopefully nobody is blinded by the light when they're driving. But I'm crossing the street now. Oh, Carl, can you turn it back to me? Can you turn it back to me so people can see the power? Thank you, sir. Okay, so yeah, so that light is back on me. And I'm walking back exactly where the light is. And little by little, I'm getting blown out. Blinded, 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 completely blinded. See that, guys? That was not even cut. That is the strength of this light. I went from here, where this light is, all the way back there. Carl, can we shine it back over there again? All the way back there, even further back. That's how far this light goes. That is wild. So, anything else that uh, you could talk about with this piece, Carl? Yeah, there is a proprietary cooling system here. There is a patent on this cooling system so there's no fan it's only cool down very very good so there is no temperature and there is also very low junction temperature and very low temperature on the front you can put your hand on if you have other other units to burn your hands on the front so it's a it's a unique technology and so i i'm an hmi guy my whole life and I want to change now, replace HMI with the LED lights. That's the first step. We can go bigger, the light goes bigger. We're working on a lot of um, lens systems so that we have fluid, spot, not focus. You cannot focus the diodes like a arc lamp or like a filament lamp. So what we have to do, we have to go like when we switch from tungsten to HMI we also have different filters okay so now we do this with this here with the LEDs we clip on white fluid medium white fluid spot lens that you can draw not the beam angle more closer than 30 degrees 
you can make it 20 degrees in order to have a spot. It's only with lenses, and that's what we're doing in the moment. That's the next step with the lights. All our LED lights will come out. We have to stay water resistant, rainproof. And that's only based that we have a, you can, you cannot put this in the, in the pool underwater. The point is the front is totally sealed. You can put the front in the water, but in the back, you have the driver, the IP67, by the way, inside. All the, the, the parts is IP65. And to have the wires, the water goes in, the water goes out, and that's it. That's the system what we uh, uh, do in the factory. So, and I think we have a lot of positive things against the HMI again. We have lower current. We have a better CI, spectrum is much better. We can dim it down to zero. HMI was only dim about 20%, 30%. Have the ballast, we don't have this, we're plugging in. So, uh, we have only plus and no service. Okay, if you have this in your rental house, you get it in. If they're broke, then they pay for it. If there's measures, they pay for it. Or if they can, you don't need a mechanic, a guy or two guys, they're only doing the service and cleaning and changing parts. It's not happening in here, okay. They are German Philips diodes. These are German Philips diodes. Now the older units, you have to be very delicate because you have to cover it to protect it from, uh, you know, the water coming into the unit and you being electrified. And this unit itself, because it is IP65 and exterior, you can leave it out in the rain without having to cover or anything like that. So on red carpets, if you're having to deal with some type of extreme weather, uh, this is a great piece to have. If you're having to deal with like, more extreme weather if you're going into the snow i believe like you've had designs in the past where uh they dropped off one of these units in like in the snow uh, yeah. in the helicopter right yeah. and they were lighting it from the helicopter yeah. running on a generator by the way you can run this on a generator and also batteries also batteries and so this alone has so many features that is quite unbelievable uh if you find out and discover this light itself so if you're an experienced gaffer electrician like that you know you got to protect these units through to any type of water or rain you got to cover it put a condom in it but this unit out there in the rain just leave it out and you can keep shooting so the time the production just keeps rolling so if you guys have any questions carl has a website it's schultz uh leds.com how do you spell schultz carl S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. S-C-H-U-L-T-Z, L-E-D-S dot com. That yes. is the website if you want to check out more uh, information on these lights. No website. So I'm going to be signing off here, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to hit them up on the website. I believe he's in social media as well. You guys are in, in, in uh, Instagram, Instagram and Facebook, right? So they have an Instagram and a Facebook as well. So you guys can reach out over there. Uh, I will be signing off. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace. Thank you.